Have your alfalfa seedlings ever looked like this? When the goal was for them to look like this? There are a number of pathogens commonly found in soil that can cause disease leading to complete or partial stand failures in alfalfa seedlings. My name is Lita Larson, Forage Associate with the Cropland Alfalfa Team. And today we'll be talking about those commonly found alfalfa seedling diseases, as well as ways to combat those diseases through the use of fungicide seed treatments coupled with genetic resistance. For starters, we'll first talk about our three big seedling diseases. Those are Pythium seed rot and damping off, Phytophthora root rot, as well as Aphanomyces root rot. Pythium is typically the first disease that we see infect alfalfa in cold, wet soils in the early spring. Pythium causes both a seed rot, where that seed will not germinate from the soil, and damping off, where that seed will germinate, emerge, but then wilt away and die. After pythium infection is where we typically see Phytophthora root rot infect. Like pythium, Phytophthora can cause damping off, but also causes root rot, where the deep taproot is inhibited from growth, and we see this pencil point look with random and adventitious roots growing above where that primary taproot should be. The last disease that we'll talk about today is Aphanomyces root rot. Aphanomyces does not cause damping off. It actually stunts our alfalfa plants growth. So here you can see examples of infected plants versus healthy plants. In addition, we see reduced nodulation and the leaves will actually turn yellow, exhibiting symptoms of nitrogen deficiency. There are currently two races of Aphanomyces with race two being the most virulent and most widespread in the Midwest. In addition, there are isolates identified within race two that are very, very aggressive that we refer to as enhanced multi-race isolates at cropland. Seedling diseases can lead to decreased plant and root health right out of the gate. That means that that alfalfa plant will never reach its full genetic potential that it could have reached had it been healthy and not infected by those pathogens early on in its life. That then leads to decreased stand density and yield because those roots are not able to uptake the needed water and nutrients that they need to be a high yielding stand. We also will then see a decrease in stand persistence because those roots are not healthy and are not able to survive the winter. That all leads to a decreased return on investment for you as the alfalfa grower. To break things down on how we can get our best control in combating these alfalfa diseases, let's first go back to the basics and look at our disease triangle. For disease to occur in the alfalfa plants, all three of the factors on the disease triangle must be met. For starters, our pathogens have to be in the soil. What makes the Phanomyces phytophthora and Pythium very hard to control is that their overwintering spore stage can actually last anywhere from 10 to 30 years in the soil, even without the presence of a host crop. That often makes the pathogen factor of our disease triangle very difficult to control since crop rotation is ineffective in controlling the inoculum load. In addition, we have to have a conducive environment. In this case, our conducive environment is wet soil. Similar to the pathogen, we often cannot control our conducive environment because we cannot control how much rain we get. That leaves us with our number one method of control as the host. Planting a resistant host will eliminate the chance of disease infecting the alfalfa plant. Our current control methods that lead to our resistant host are the use of fungicide seed treatments coupled with genetic resistance. Now I first wanna break down what resistance means as not all genetic resistance is the same. High resistance to the pathogens is classified as greater than 50% resistance. We rely on our fungicide seed treatments to provide added protection in combination with our resistance genetics to reach higher than just 50% resistance, pushing around 70, 80, and 90% resistance to our various pathogens. It's important to remember that like genetic resistance, not all fungicide seed treatments are created the same. Apron XL is typically the standard in the industry, which offers control to Pythium and added control to Phytophthora, but does not control Phanomyces. Stamina does offer added control to Phanomyces root rot. Therefore, it's important to select those fungicide seed treatments with multiple modes of action to give you maximum control of the three alfalfa seedling diseases. Here's an example of plates infested with Pythium seed rot. 
On the left, you can see untreated seeds that did not have stamina or apronic cell. And those seeds have actually rotted away in that plate. As compared to our plate on the right, you can see that those seeds have germinated. And if they were planted in the soil, they would eventually emerge and become healthy plants. In summary, our number one control method when preventing alfalfa from being infected with Pythium phytophthora and Aphanomyces is variety selection. Select those varieties with high genetic resistance as well as those with fungicide seed treatments with multiple modes of action to give us maximum control of these seedling diseases. For more information, reach out to your local Winfield United retailer to learn more. Thanks for watching.